Scenario definition. The scenario definition is where we define certain aspects of the scenario that are used by the back end and the user interface. There are many things in the file that we do not need to touch, but these will be explained as we go through the file. The display name is the name that will show in the user interface. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll be using the name Demo01. Version number, we can leave as zero. The next three checked boxes, hidden, mandatory tutorial, and shown training center fundamentals can be left unchecked. The plain text name should be the same as our display name with one major exception. There are no spaces or special characters in here. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll be writing demo01. Scenario type will be left as mission unless you're writing a tutorial. Order number sets the order in which the scenarios will be displayed. Since we are only creating one scenario, we will leave this as zero. You can pick and choose where your scenario sits if you're creating a pack. <clears throat> the description is where we write the description that will show in the user interface. In this instance, we will just write this as, this is a demo scenario. Difficulty is a rating from 1 to 5 on how difficult the scenario is. This number corresponds to the boxes to the right of a scenario name in the game user interface. Setting this to 1 gives us one green box, where 5 would give us 5 red boxes. For the sake of this tutorial, we will set this to 3. Although difficulty tags aren't yet displaying in the user interface, they are an option to set during scenario creation. If you wish to use these, then you will need to do the following. First, click the plus icon. Now click the arrow next to the zero. Under data table, search for scenario and select scenario difficulty. And then from the row name, select your difficulty from the row name drop down list. We are going to be having coupling in this tutorial eventually, so we'll select coupling. We can now close difficulty tags back down. Minutes to complete is the number of minutes a scenario takes to complete. For now, I will set this to 90. It can always be changed at a later date. Start location and end location are used for the map on the scenario select UI when the scenario is selected. For the sake of our demonstration, we will set both to minehead. Map waypoints below this are used in an instance where a route has multiple ways of getting to a destination to show the correct route on the map. If you were doing, for instance, say, on the Brighton to London map, you want to go from Brighton to London, Victoria, and then back to Brighton, your start location tag would be Brighton, but to get the map to show correctly, your end location tag would be London, Victoria. As I said though, for us, it's going to be Minehead and Minehead as we're not leaving the Minehead area. Trains involved. This is where you set the rail vehicle definition of any player train as used in the timetable. Since we will only be using the West Somerset Railway Class 09 for our tutorial, we will look for and select its rail vehicle vehicle definition file or rvd so click the plus icon click the drop down rvd wsr and we want the class 09 which is at the top of the list that now tells us that we're going to be using the class 09 icon is where we would set the image that is shown on the scenario select screen we'll come back to this at a later date we can ignore next scenario for now if this was part of a scenario pack, setting the next scenario here would display as the next scenario in the user interface after the player has completed this one. We also ignore recommended tutorials. For the three timetable boxes, we set our timetable files here, which in our case is demo01 timetable. We could add additional timetables here as well, though for our tutorial, we do not have to.
Player only services is where you list the services driven by the player. This name is taken from the name of the service or services defined in the timetable. It means that the AO will not drive this service. For the sake of ours, I'm going to set it as player 09. And this is what we will call the service in um, the timetable when we go back to it. Now, if we set the start scenario driving train checkbox to tick, ticked, sorry, the player will start in the train. For this to work, you will need to know the seat name from the train's RVM and have the GUID of the train. Alternatively, you can have the player start outside the train. This is done by placing a start actor in the world. We will not be covering this as part of this tutorial series. It will, however, be covered at a later date as part of a list of miscellaneous tutorials. For now, we're going to click that and we're going to leave all this blank because we'll come back to it. Scenario trigger spawn. This is where we set the spawn marker for when the player is in on foot mode. To set this up, we click on pick location. We then go to West Somerset Railway map. Come up. And just for this instance, I'm going to put the, I'm going to select arbitrarily on the platform here. Now, if we go back to the definition, it's now filled in the spawn location here. If there is an issue, we can use the spawn offset to offset the spawn from where it is. We want to set the trigger view asset to scenario trigger view blueprint. And for the display text, Something simple, in our case, the demo one scenario. For the date and time, we want to set this exactly this to exactly the same time as the timetable file. For our example, that is 2023. O nine, two three, and then O eight thirty. And that's set. We can ignore the next three image boxes and move on in the file. So that's loading screen image, opening splash screen, and closing image. Game intro we leave alone. So we do not tick this anything in here. We ignore, unless you want the end of the scenario to award extra experience points for getting to the end, you can leave this unticked. But this is where you would set additional experience to be gained for the player if they've completed, say, a long scenario that's like really long, like more than an hour. You can give them bonus experience points. Conductor is where you would override the conductor for the train. It is usually found in the second man's seat. We'll leave this blank for now. Player drivers, we can set the player outfits. We do not need to adjust these, so we'll leave them blank. For the weather scenario, we'll select a West Somerset Railway weather pattern. And I'm gonna select preset clear sky with an with Initial wetness of zero. If we had it raining at the start of the scenario, initial wetness is where we would set how wet the ground is between zero being not wet and one being fully wet. The same goes for in winter scenarios when you have snow, the initial ground snow level and the initial piled snow level. And these are dynamic during the scenario. We'll come back to weather when I cover um, weather blueprints in a miscellaneous tutorial section at a later date. Now, objectives. We'll select our objective file under Scenario Manager Actor class, which should be Demo 01 Objectives, as we set. We want to tick auto-generate objectives from a service. and then select Objective Composer WSR from the Objective Composer class. So, a 
That's the one we want. Yep, we have selected it. We can ignore vehicle numbering overrides and move on to the score section. Driving reward distance is the distance between each driving point score addition, where you get points for driving under the speed limit or driving slightly over the speed limit, and you get zero if you're well over the speed limit. For this scenario, we'll select miles from the drop down list and set it to 0.5. Which is already set to. If I go 0 0.5, it'll balance out at 0 0.49999. We can leave the driving reward points alone. Score thresholds is where you set the score levels for the various medals. As a rule of thumb, platinum should be 90% of the total achievable score, gold 80%, silver 60%, and bronze 40%. For now, I'm going to put some arbitrary values in until we know what our score is from the um, from playing through the scenario later. We will return to the definition file later to to change some things around. 